Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Spin Cycle, the show for reviews of new music, old music, whatever music I really feel like talking about. Today I'm going to be going in a little bit different direction. I'm going to be talking about Chevelle's new album, The North Corridor. This album was released on July 8th, 2016, so it's a fairly new album. I don't have a lot of experience with it, but I did want to go in something a little bit different direction than, you know, the normal, like, metal that I've been talking about. So, um... First, before I talk about the album itself, just to kind of talk about where Chevelle is as a band. So Chevelle is one of those really tough bands to categorize because they they started to make, make their mark in a big way when, you know, during the rise of new metal and alternative metal in the early 2000s. You know, that was back when, you know, bands like Slipknot were starting to get big, but also Linkin Park and Papa Roach and all these other bands who you know, weren't exactly metal per se, but certainly had a more aggressive rock sound to them. Um, Chevelle themselves have kind of this post-grunge alternative metal sound to them, similar to bands like Seether or Breaking Benjamins, a couple other bands who started to make their mark during this time period. Um, they're definitely known for having aggressive riffs with some melodic vocals, similar to a band like Tool, but definitely more commercial. Whereas Tool is much more experimental, Chevelle is a little more focused and you know more willing to you know more gonna do band songs that you might hear on the radio. So, interesting thing about Chevelle is they actually got their start on a Christian label. They, their first album, Point Number One, actually came out on a Christian label and was sold in Christian stores, which for them obviously is fine because they are Christians. They're not afraid to say that, basically, but at the same time, they didn't want to be labeled as a Christian band. They didn't want to go out there and be a Christian rock band. So when they played OzFest or they played with bands like Disturbed and Cradle of Filth, they actually got some criticism. And granted, I actually remember when they played with, um, I saw them with a, dis uh, it was a Disturbed concert with Taproot and Unloco. That was actually a great show across the board because every band brought it and they sounded, it, it just thematically they all sounded great together. And the fact that Chevelle was Christian didn't really have any effect on it whatsoever. The crowd loved it, the band sounded great. It was just, it, I mean, they fit in with that group. So they def they definitely did not want to just be typecast as this, you know, Christian rock band, which is fine. Obviously, they can keep their faith without having to put it into every single thing they do. And that was right around the time I started listening to them. Um, it was in high school, not to give away my age, but um, I started listening to them in high school. And their, fir their the first album of theirs I started listening to was Wonder What's Next. Um, which, to me, is still arguably their best album. I, that doesn't mean that I always say, you know, the older stuff is always the best. It's just, in this case, I would say that their album, Wonder What's Next, is their best album. The band itself started with th the three brothers, um, and the, together, those three brothers did three albums. Point number one, Wonder What's Next, and This Type of Thinking Should Do Us End. And Wonder What's Next was a great album. It had a single that was amazing that you know got tons of radio play and then they followed it up with an album that was you know spiritually similar in terms of the style of music the sound um, it also had a couple of very catchy singles on it and then after that album was released one of the brothers left the band you could say he left the band or you could say he was kicked out of the band whichever way it goes basically joe left the band um so the band at that point had to find a new bass player and backing vocalist and since then, since 2004, they've had the same lineup, the same three-person lineup, the two brothers and their bassist. I don't know all their names. And since then, they've released four albums, and now their fifth one as this group, The North Corridor. So it's The North Corridor is their eighth album. Now, across the board, they do have some limits because they are a three-piece band. You can only do so many things if you have a three-piece band. The songs are going to be a little bit more raw, they're going to be a little more direct, sometimes a little more brief, and you know, typically they're going to showcase each element of the band pretty well, um, because you're not drowning out the bass player with two guitars, or you know, you're letting the guitarist play some, you know, you know, play some solos, giving the drummer some opportunities to mix it up. So with the three-piece band, you have there's more opportunity for some interesting musical work, but it's also limited to where. You know, I feel like I've been spoiled when I listen to bands that have, you know, five or six members and give out just some incredible sounds, but of course they can do that with five or six members. 
But Chevelle is a band that I actually have kind of gone away from. I really haven't listened to them very much over the past few years. In fact, the last album of theirs I really did listen to them was Venusera, which um, was, I think, like 2006 or 2007. And since then, my interests have kind of shifted. And even that album wasn't didn't really spark for me. It just it didn't grab my attention too well. So I kind of lost a little bit of interest in Chevelle and following their newer stuff. Um, so uh, I don't know necessarily how their sound has evolved. Hence why I wanted to give the North Corridor a listen, because this is really the first exposure I've had to new Chevelle music or Chevelle in the modern age since Venusera. So I was curious to know what their sound is like now versus what it was when I started listening to them back in the early 2000s. So the North Corridor, they started writing this album following the, you know, their album, their support, you know, after they supported their last album, La, La Gargola, um, basically the gargoyle in Spanish, they, you know, toured for that one, then they decided, okay, now we're going to start writing for a new album. And they wanted this album to be heavier, and I believe that they achieved that fact. Um, I can't say how much heavier it is than their previous album, but it definitely is a, it, it sounds even heavier than some of their older stuff as well. The first single from the album was released in May of 2016, and it was called Joyride, or it was called Joyride Omen, um, which, you know, is interesting kind of song. It, probably a, you know, one of the more single-worthy type of songs, and I'll get to that actually in a minute, but um, the album itself, it does kind of resonate with some of their earlier work. Um, it does remind me a bit of their earlier albums, not quite to the same degree as, you know, like Wonder What's Next or um, uh, This Type of Thinking Can Do Us In, in terms of the the music is a little bit it's various. There's a variety of sounds in the songs themselves while still maintaining that Chevelle tone. And Chevelle does have a distinct tone to them. They don't always, you know, not every song is like the red that is what I would almost call a formulaic song. It's, and I don't mean that in a bad way, I just mean it in a way that the song is very, the structure is predictable in a sense. You have the you know, the intro, you have the refrain, you have the second verse, then you have the refrain, then you have solo, and then you have the refrain, and, and I mean, it, it's it's a formula that you get for most songs. Like, it, I mean, most popular songs will have that kind of formula. And Chevelle has followed that, but they've also done things that are different. They've also, you know, kind of gone in other, you know, less symmetrical, less structured ways. Um, and you can sense that in this album they've almost drawn inspiration from other bands or at least it sounds that way it's it's kind of strange and i'll get into that as well but you know that there's definitely some moments where you're almost questioning if you're listening to chevelle or if you're listening to something else and like i said there were no on this album there are no real formulaic songs and that's both good and bad and the reason i say it, there's actually some bad to it is because you don't necessarily need to have formulaic songs, but particularly in this album, what you get are a lot of repetitive beats. You get a lot of songs where they repeat one kind of bar over and over again, or they repeat one line of, you know, one lyric over and over again. And, you know, they'll throw a solo in there to give you a little bit more diversity in the song, but for the most part, it's kind of repetitive and redundant. Um, there are no hooks similar to a song like The Red or like Vitamin R. There, I mean, when you think of a song like that, who have something that just like, you know, grabs you and you can, you know, sing it and do that. There aren't a lot of songs on this album that have that. Now, granted, I haven't listened to this album too much. I've only listened to it a couple times, but none of them really do have that same kind of hook that we were looking for. But it is definitely heavy, and it's certainly more heavy than melodic, um, which means it doesn't sound as balanced as some of their other albums, some of their older stuff, where they were able to balance heavy and melody at the same time. Um, and one of my biggest criticisms of this album is the fact that there are there's a lot of dead space to end these songs, especially in the second half of the album. And what I mean by that is when a song ends, there's different ways you can end it. You can end it abruptly, or you can end it with kind of the, you know, guitar, just kind of the, you know, just kind of let the guitar just 
fade out. You know, you could do an actual fade, like a an actual fade. There's multiple ways to end a song, but one thing that you know gets a little bit old is when you end a song with that kind of guitar fade, but it just lingers for 30, 40 seconds. And there's a few songs on here that do that. So you wonder, well, is there more to the song? Or is it just going to kind of, that's like somebody just did a guitar strum and then just they just stood around for a little bit. It's, I call that dead space because I don't necessarily see that as being strongly musical. It's just something as kind of a way to pad the time of the album. So I was a little bit annoyed by how they ended a few of their songs. Um, that's definitely my biggest criticism of this album is that dead space that you get. Because I don't mind a variety. I don't mind not having formulaic songs, but I do mind when the album is just padded to, you know, you know, it was 30 minutes, now it's 40 minutes because we added this all this time just to, you know, hear somebody basically do one last guitar strum and then that's it. Like, that's their outro. There's nothing musical to that. It's just noise at that point. All right. Let's get into the album itself. So here are some of the highlights from the album. Um, Warhol's Showbiz. That's This one is actually a good song in terms of like an anthem ability. It has that sort of, you know, it does have a refrain that you can you could hear people yelling at, you know, at concerts. It does have that anthem sound to it, which, you know, every album needs, you know, I shouldn't say every album, but it's always good to have a song that is an anthem. It's something to get the crowd into it, get them yelling and screaming and all that, and Warhol Showbiz seems like one of those songs that definitely has the potential to draw people in and get their fists in the air for that one. So it's a good, fun song. Uh, Young Wicked, this is one of those great, aggressive tracks You know that I was talking about. Definitely not a formulaic song. It does have a strong solo in it. It does have a good, fun solo. It's not a long solo. I mean, none of the songs in this album are very long, with the exception of the last one. Most of them are between four and five minutes long. But some of them do have some very good solos, and Young Wicked is one of those that does have a great solo on it. Now, that last song I was talking about is called Shot from a Cannon. Um, this is probably their most dynamic song. It does have the most going on, um, but it's also very sludgy. It's not, I mean, when you think about it, it's its not the kind of song that's, that, you know, that ends an album with, like, it doesn't end it with a bang. It doesn't end it with kind of a slow outro. It is a you know, aggressive song, but it's also very sludgy, um, which, you know, a few more listens, I probably, you know, start to see what they were doing there. But for the most part, I think it is a little too sludgy and a kind of a slow way, you know, just kind of a, you know, grinding way to end the album. Um, and then there's the songs that sound like other people's songs. Um, you know how I was talking about how it sounds like they drew inspiration from other bands? Well, here is a couple of examples. That song single, Joyride, Omen, is sounds a lot like a Tool song. Not only vocally, which, you know, he's been criticized or at least commented that his vocals are reminiscent of uh, Maynard from Tool quite frequently, that that's the sort of tone, you know, that's the sort of sound he, you know, emulates. But in this case, it definitely does sound musically like a Tool song. Um, not a bad song, but it's certainly very reminiscent of Tool. And then you have a song like Rivers, which sounds just like Breaking Benjamin. <laughs> I mean, the even the, the, the guitar work on that does remind me a lot of Breaking Benjamin, um, which is a band I love, but suffice it to say, Chevelle and Breaking Benjamin, I try to keep those two bands, you know, you, distinct. But here, it's very much like a Breaking Benjamin type of song. And then Punchline. This is probably the slowest and the most, like, low-key song on the album, but it starts off and sounds exactly like a Nine Inch Nails song. I mean, there is Trent Reznor all over this song. Um, it, it just, it's so <laughs> reminiscent of Nine Inch Nails, it's scary. Um, again, it's not bad, it's not bad to have songs that are reminiscent of other bands, but it's kind of weird because it's like, I want, I want there to be something in this album to kind of you know, pull everything together to kind of draw it all together and say this is what this album represents. Not every album does that, and in this one definitely doesn't, because there's just uh, there's such a weird variety in this one. And then probably the most melodic track on the album I'd give to "Got Burned," um, which is um, probably my second favorite song on the album. Um, it's a really good good track. I do like the melody to it. It is still very aggressive and has a great solo, but. Um, 
yeah, it's it definitely has that melody that reminiscent of the you know older Chevelle when you had songs like Closure and The Red and um, Wonder What's Next, those type of songs. My favorite song on the album, and this is an album that had 10 songs, my favorite song is going to go to Door to Door Cannibals. This is actually the song that opens the album and is probably the most reminiscent of older Chevelle. Um, it's this kind of grinding new metal throwback that, um, you know, new metal gets a bad rap, but at the same time, it this kind of, this song really did, you know, remind me of that old Chevelle. And it started out the album with it, so I thought, all right, so this is kind of what I'm in store for. Turns out I wasn't. It's probably <laughs> it's the only song of its kind on the album, um, but it's certainly a good song, good catchy type of song, and definitely my favorite from the album. So. Overall, it's a good album, and it might grow on me over time, but it's not particularly memorable. Like, even when I think about it, like, right now, the things that I think about on this album are, you know, a couple refrains from the songs and the fact that so many of the songs end with just this, you know, 40 seconds of noise, which is not a good way to end an album. So, you know, when, when an album just doesn't have those hooks in it, when it doesn't grab you and just, you know, pull you into the album and just blow your mind, you know, I, it's something that it would have to grow on me for me to really appreciate it. And again, maybe that's because I haven't been listening to Chevelle, so I'm not as, you know, familiar with their sound as it exists now, but the, the, the fact remains that Chevelle has changed a bit from, you know, the, the band that I, you know, remember. They've gone in a, you know, different direction, a direction I think they can certainly build upon um, and this album is certainly a good, heavy, you know, post-grunge album, but first listen through, not particularly memorable. So that's my review of The North Corridor. So now, my top five for the week. In honor of James Hetfield's 53rd birthday, I'm going to look at some Metallica deep cuts that, you know, don't get the attention I think they deserve. Um, one of them, Dyer's Eve off of and justice for all that's a song that i think just does not get the attention it it should get and justice for all is a superb album all around jason newstead's first album with the band following the death of cliff burton and you know the the way that they open the song with blacken they just open up with this you know just fast fun song is great but it's even better that they close with a song that's really fast and really fun and dire's eve is just that through the Never, um, this song from the Black Album is obviously has you know some place in people's hearts because they did make a movie about it. I didn't see the movie, but it's it's just a f it's one of those songs on the Black Album that I think also gets forgotten because you have songs like Enter Sandman and Sad But True and The Unforgiven and Nothing Else Matters and The God That Fit. Like pretty much every other song on that album, everybody is like, yeah, yeah. But Through the Never is one I think should get a little bit more credit. So. Uh, the Four Horsemen off of Kill 'Em All. It actually is probably the most dynamic song on Kill 'Em All. It's kind of the master of puppets of that album. Um, it's you know it's the long it's one of the longer songs. It's got a lot of you know great guitar work. It's just all around just a fantastic you know great song. But I think it gets overshadowed by songs like Whiplash and Seek and Destroy. Trapped Under Ice off of Ride the Lightning. This is one that, like, of the two songs that I almost always forget about Metallica, they're both off Ride the Lightning, and one of them is Trapped Under Ice, the other one is Fight Fire with Fire. But Trapped Under Ice is a great, like, thrashy 1980s metal song. It just, it it it, it, it works in so many ways. You know, the freezing, out of my own. It's just, it's a great song. <laughs> and um, I think it deserves to get a little bit more sound. And then last, but definitely not least, is the outro song from Master of Puppets, Damage Incorporated. Damage Incorporated is, like, the iconic song of closing out an album. Like, if you're going to end an album, do it with something like that. It has this great, like, slow kind of intro coming out of Orion, you know, an eight-minute instrumental masterpiece. And as you're coming out of that, you go right into Damage Incorporated, which is just fast and fun and aggressive it's the kind of metallica song that you know it's it's why i've been listening to metallica for so long um songs like damage incorporated have just it's so fast so fun and just iconic metallica so those are my top five for the week in honor of james 
Hetfield's 53rd birthday. Happy birthday, James. So that's my review of Chevelle's The North Corridor, and that does it for this week's episode of Spin Cycle. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to keep up on all of my YouTube videos by clicking subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you and you rock. Also visit my homepage at dkessner.com where you can find out about all my various other projects, including my written works. Hmm? How about that? You can also find me at my social media handles, so drop in and say hi. And again, thank you so much for all your support. Love you.